All right. First segment brought to you by the Harmony Foundation. Uh, go to HarmonyFoundationInc.com to check out more. He went a lot better in them. rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's let's go to the Broncos subject. Broncos got four compensatory picks from the NFL because of free agents they lost last year. They now have ten picks in the upcoming draft. You and I have been here a long, long time. I, I can't remember, except for those years when the draft was 12 <laughs> rounds. It was in, 17 in, rounds in, at in, one point in when the, I was here. Well, in the last decade, decade and a half, since it's gone down to seven rounds, I can't remember the last time the Broncos had this many picks. Is this a good thing or not a good thing, Woody? No, oh, I think it's a great thing. I, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I, I would say this, and, and people might wonder, well, why did they get four more picks? Well, they lost seven guys, and they signed three. And Marcus DeWare did not. DeMarcus Ware. I like to Marcus, Marcus DeWare. DeWare. That works. I'm sure there's somebody DeMarcus out there named Ware. Marcus DeWare. Am I one of those guys that... What do Dyslexic? Yeah. <laughs> so. Mm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I never realized that before. Maybe I am. Marcus DeMarcus, no, DeMarcus Ware. Ware was released. So he didn't count as someone who was a, an unrestricted right. free agent. So they got... They gave up seven. They got three. You could probably figure out who they were. Emmanuel Sanders, Akeem Talib, and T.J. Ward. Right. So they got four picks for the difference in that. So right. next year, if you're looking ahead, as I do, if you're, next year they signed Owen Daniels and the defensive end and the, the safety, but they lost like seven guys. So they'll get four more next year. Probably. Probably. I, I think this is a. I think this is a very yeah, good probably. thing. Probably they'll get yeah. four more. I, think, I can. I can subtract. <laughs> <laughs> you, you lost seven. You signed four. That's four. Go ahead. I think it's a good thing uh, because <laughs> I think this will allow the Broncos. They're picking 28th overall right now. This will allow them, if they care to, to package picks and move up in each respective round if they choose to. Look, you're going to have trouble finding 10 spots on the roster for 10 rookies. And I don't know that you want 10 rookies on the roster anyway. So you package some of these picks, you move up, you get somebody better. In the old days when uh, there were 17 rounds and Red Miller was here, I saw Red the other day. I'm going to talk about him a bit today in Woody's World. Uh, and Dan Reeves and even John Ralston, by the time they got to the 15th round, they were generally saying, do you have a cousin you want us to draft? <laughs> but Boyd Brown, who was a backup tight end here, was a 17th round pick. Uh, there was uh, Ron Egloff was one of those picks that was in the teens. I, I believe that Shannon Sharp, it was later, but I think Shannon Sharp was drafted in the seventh or eighth round. Yes. You can find. Seventh. Uh, I'll tell you who was drafted really low. Tyrone Braxton. I thought he was a free agent, but you may be no, right. He was like an 11th or 12th round draft pick. Do you know what round Carl Mecklenburg, a potential Hall of Famer, was drafted I in? I believe the 12th round. I believe it was the 17th round. We can look that up. Okay. But Mecklenburg was drafted Research at the team. very end of the draft because nobody knew exactly what position he played. And guess what? He played all the positions yeah. when he came to the pro. Well, so and, and, and you can get people, the, the point I'm making is yeah. you can get people in the 10th round. I, However, I think you make a an excellent point that after because they, they show up in the third fourth round you could take your <clears throat> second round pick and move up by giving somebody a fifth rounder you can't trade the compensatory picks but you can trade your own pick in that round so they could package say a fifth rounder and you can go to a site that will tell you exactly what you get for when you make deals involving yeah. draft choices but they could package a second and a fifth and get a higher in the second round Mecklenburg, 12th round, by the way. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's, thanks, guys. That's good information. Um, it's always kind of boring on draft day around here because the Broncos rarely have a high draft pick. So I, I would like to see them. If for no other well, reason, entertainment purposes, I'd like to see them move up from 28, get a better pick. I, I doubt that's going to happen. I think when you say draft day, and I just watched that movie a few nights ago, I think what's going to happen is the third day, when they have the last four the latter five rounds, rounds. Yeah. the last four rounds, which will be a Saturday, it always is. And this year, and I think I got it wrong one day. This year they moved the draft to Chicago, correct, your hometown. That that third day for a lot of teams that have those compensatory picks 
will be very interesting in terms of what the, what they get. And so you still think the Broncos' number one pick would be a defensive lineman? Well, or, uh, well, no, 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 sort? no. I I didn't put it that way. What I said was, I believe their greatest need for depth and talent right now is defensive line, particularly nose tackle, and I would like to see them use a first round pick on a defensive lineman. Okay. I don't know that they're going to. My guess is it'll either be, my guess is, well, you, we know how John Elway operates, and I, and I agree with this philosophy. You take the best player available. The best player that's on that board, the player that you believe can help you the most, that's what you go for. And then you worry about how to work it out later. Why, why you give me a look like. <laughs> well, I, I, why I'm the best why player available. Talk, I, I listen I, to you, but then I think about things, because John Elway and I had that really heated discussion in regard to the year they chose Vaughn Miller. And I wanted him to go after Patrick Peterson. And he came out of the draft and he, after he drafted Von Miller, and he smirked at me like you think I did to you. And he said, big news, we're going to announce we just traded for Patrick Peterson. We'll have Von Miller and Patrick Peterson. Well, guess what? Uh, Patrick Peterson actually has turned out to be a better player than Von Miller. That's a great discussion. Do you think, Patrick, would you rather have Patrick Peterson or Von Miller at this point? Well, in the back Given of my, all the stuff that's happened. In the back of my mind, I'm always thinking one more indiscretion one more bad step by Von Miller, and they lose him for a full year. So I probably would go Patrick Peterson for, for that reason and because Patrick Peterson gives you more than just his time on defense. He's a great punt returner. So well. you're, you are believing that I would be a better draft pick than That's exactly than what Elway. I'm saying. So you're, I you're believe, saying I believe on national, you should be national everything. Absolutely. Right if there's a team out there that needs a VP of football operations and or general manager, Woodrow Wilson Page is your man. And I would, I mean, it's a tough call because Von Miller is one of the three or four premier quarterback rushers. rushers. Yeah. Yeah. In, in all of football. Patrick Peterson is now the highest paid cornerback. And as you pointed out, and plus he's had like 15 interceptions in yeah. his career. And he has been a return man. He's too valuable to use as a return man. I wouldn't but do it. He had three or four returns for touchdowns as a rookie. He hasn't had a sniff of trouble in his career. Has been a good teammate. Has yes. actually talked him into to getting other players. Uh, who was the player out of LSU that got into trouble that's named after the, the badger. animal? Yeah. Thank you. Taron Matthew. <laughs> yeah. He, he talked the, uh, the honey badger. He talked uh, the Cardinals into going out and getting him. I, I think it's a very close, who's more important, a cornerback or a linebacker? Well, he's not just a linebacker. He's, a, he's a, an excellent pass rusher. He's an elite pass rusher, and you need those guys in this league right now. Yeah. It's a quarterback it's, it's league, a, so you need, you need somebody to pressure the It's a discussion that we should have again sometime. Yeah. So anyway, Elway was always kind of looking down his nose at me that I wanted to choose Patrick Peterson. You want, you think a defensive Lineman. I think that's what they need most, yeah. Okay. I keep saying, and I'm going to keep saying it until the draft is over with, Max Williams is your guy. You Max like the Williams. tight end out of Minnesota. they got enough defensive players. You're going for the Super Bowl this year. We're going for the Super Bowl. Thank you, Newt. And I want the Broncos to draft another tight end. they well, got two well, look, tight ends. Okay, so connect the dots. Why does drafting another tight end mean they're going to win the Super Bowl? I want them to win. Let me explain this to you. I'll Please say do. it slowly. Please I'm from do. the South, and you're kind of slow. You're from Chicago. I think there is enough talent on the defense. Okay. I believe there's enough talent on the defense. Fair. I think you need one more weapon, as Peyton Manning had last year in Jesus Thomas, on offense. Owen Daniels going to be a nice player. I want a guy that is as effective in the red zone and that's not Owen Daniels. That's not Virgil Green. That's not Dominic Jones, whoever he is. That would be Max Williams, who's proven to be a red zone See, terror if, I, if I were drafting offense, in Minnesota. I would probably go offensive line. I, well, I know. And I say to, to protect you, the 39-year-old quarterback. And by again. the way, happy birthday, Peyton, 39 today. I would, yeah. I would get a, a, an offensive Jack lineman. Vitti, he's actually who, 63. <laughs> who, can, who can help protect your 39-year-old quarterback and down the road can protect your presumably future starter Brock Osweiler. 
Uh, yeah, plan on that. I think that you can get offensive linemen. It's been proven. I will get out the Broncos book. No, I'm, here I, I hear you. It's been proven you. that you can get guys in the second, third, fourth round that are offensive linemen. You know, you need a slug to be able to move a little bit. I hear you We're can not get, talking about. I hear you can get Ring of Fame linebackers in the 12th round, too. I didn't say linebacker. Well, I said my point draft is, a tight end. My point is you can get just about any position in later rounds if you're drafting right. Offensive linemen generally are guys that were drafted in lower rounds. Because it's not a glamour pick. Well, I don't care and, about and glamour. And a lot of people don't want to go about, for that in the first round. I, I think and you, you can, can get them in later you, rounds. You're yeah. saying he'll draft the best player available, and that's why I was kind of laughing. That's his philosophy. Yeah, and, I, and I agree with it. That is, that is to bull. Uh, I won't say the other word. I don't have any money in my pocket today. But that's bull. They draft for need. You know it as well as I do. What do they go do? At they times gotta, they, they do. Gotta, not at times, all the time. I hate it when National wait, Football wait, 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 wait. League. I hate it when National no. Football League gentlemen no, said, we're going to no. bat. If you remember, you're gonna bat, would, they're going to draft the best player available at the position they I, want. I'm going to give you an example of how he didn't draft for need in the Von Miller draft. They were desperate for defensive linemen. That's why a lot of people were hooking them up with Marcel Darius, who's in Buffalo now. And I believe Nick Fairley. Was, wasn't Nick Fairley in that draft sure, as well? Yeah, yeah. Two really high-profile defensive linemen coming out of college. They went for linebacker instead of their greatest need. They went for linebacker because John Elway felt Von Miller was the best talent on the board when they picked at number two. He did not draft for need that Von draft. Miller, he drafted he, best player Von available. Von Miller is a defensive end. Uh, okay. They went for a defensive lineman. He is not a pass guy. He's not a. He never. That's why I'm not a, a run stopper. Yeah. yeah, he didn't stop the run. He doesn't stop the pass. He rushes the passer. He's a defensive end who comes from the outside. That's what he is. That's what they drafted. They didn't draft Patrick if Peterson. You remember, they could not stop the run during the Josh McDaniels era. They were getting gashed they left do and right during the Josh. But well, what did they do well? <laughs> what did they do well during? He was what? He won his first six games. And still can't figure that out. And then, and then lost went two the and next eight. Ten or then something. Then went two and eight. Yeah. And then the next year he was uh, do well. two and six or two and eight when they dumped him finally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so tell me something he did well. He drafted offensive linemen. Most of them are gone now. He drafted. Uh, oh, you get. Uh, he did draft some pretty good players. Walton. Walton's available if you want to bring him back. We're not talking about Bill Walton. We're talking about J.D. Walton. Zane Beatles is gone. He went off into that abyss called Jacksonville where uh, we now have Jews Thomas. Uh, isn't that a fall off the map kind of place that the feeling in Europe 600 years ago was you didn't want to sail off toward this direction because you're going to fall over the edge? I don't know where you're going, but you're going to fall over the edge. Well, that's what they've done. They have sailed off, and they have fallen off the edge. You didn't hear a word about Zane Beatles, did you, last year? <laughs> I mean, no. he is as popular a Beatles as Ringo Starr. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you heard about Ringo Starr? Talk about a guy. He's going to outlive them all, and he still hadn't had a hit record since he was with them. Didn't have one when he was with them, you know, unless you count. I... Uh, you know, Octopus's okay. garden. We something. have fallen off the edge of the <laughs> earth here in this discussion. I'm going to tell you, Harmony is Colorado's premier treatment program for drug and alcohol addiction. It's located just outside of Estes Park. They've got a really nice 45-acre mountain campus. It's gorgeous, and it is insurance-friendly. So visit HarmonyFoundationInc.com.